What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your old computer into a powerful router. For this video, I'm going to be using my old machine. This machine needs to have two network cards. One of them I'm going to be using built in into motherboard and second one I bought it on Amazon for like 10 or 15 bucks. And uh, so this one of the cables is going to be plugged in from my cable modem. And this cable is going to be plugged in into my wireless router. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plug in directly into the one of those LAN ports. I'm not going to use WIM port. So that way my wireless router is just going to act like a wireless switch. So before we're going to begin downloading, I'm going to explain you a little bit how my network is set up and how it's going to be set up after I'm going to install and I'm going to connect that router to my network. So this is my internet connection right now. This is my modem. This is my router and this is my computer or my home network. That's how I got it connected right now. So then once I'm going to install my router and a firewall, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it internet modem, but from the modem, I'm going to connect into my firewall router. And then from here, I'm going to connect into my Wi-Fi, switch Wi-Fi. And like I told you guys earlier, I'm not going to use this WAM port. I'm just going to connect to LAN port. So it's just going to act like a dummy switch and a Wi-Fi. But I can actually go back in and configure Wi-Fi, set up SSID and all that other stuff. And then my computer is going to be connected to here. And my laptop is also going to be connected to here. But in case, for example, if you guys have modem and router all in one box, so for example, internet and then modem and router all in one and then laptop computer is something else. So if you guys have set up like this and then if you guys decide or, you know, use one of your old computer, turn into a router and a firewall, your setup is going to look like this. So with that being said, you're going to have to most likely turn off some features on your modem turn off routing features and turn off Wi-Fi features. Because if you're going to be still using as a Wi-Fi or a router, then it's going to defeat the purpose of router or firewall. Basically firewall, you're protecting your home network. So once you're going to turn all that off, you're going to be able to connect your firewall. And then from your firewall, you're not going to have no Wi-Fi for your laptop or smartphones. And you're only going to be able to connect one of your devices, like for example, your home computer. So in this case, you're going to have to purchase another router or something to put it in, in the middle. So if you have modem and router all in one box, then most likely you'll have to purchase additional device. So before actually setting up router firewall, think and see if you'll need to spend extra money on additional hardware. To download PFSense, we need to go to pfsense.org and I'll put link in the description below. Now, right here, we need to click on downloads and then here we need to scroll down and uh, architecture. I'm going to choose AMD 64 installer. I'm going to use USB mem stick. And right here for the console, I'm just going to use VGA. And then I'm going to click on download and I'm going to click OK to save file. Also, we need to download Rufus and to do that, we need to go to Rufus.ie and right here, just scroll down and I'm going to be using portable version and I'm just going to download and save this one too. And one more program we need to download, it's going to be 7-Zip. So we can just go to Google and type 7-Zip. Open the first link and I'm just going to download this top one and I'll click save. Once 7-Zip is downloaded, I'm going to install it really quick. Okay, once the download is complete, we need to open our download folder and in download folder, we need to right click on pfsense file, the one we just downloaded and then click on 7-zip and then extract here to the pfsense folder. Once the file is extracted, 
we need to double click on Rufus and in here we need to choose our flash drive so plug in your flash drive into your computer I would recommend to have at least one or two gig of flash drive and then select your device here and then we need to click on this button select and right here we need to navigate to download folder and then double click on pfSense folder the one we just extracted and then double click on this file and then click on start and then the, this pop-up box this is just stating all the data is going to be deleted from your flash drive click ok and if you have another pop-up box like this click ok one more time once this is complete you can click on close and you can eject your flash drive now we need to plug in our flash drive into our old computer power on your computer and boot into the boot menu on my computer since this is Dell I just need to press on F12 on your computer could be something else and right here we need to choose our flash drive mine is USB generic flash disk and then press enter and right here enter one more time right here we need to press on accept and right here I'm just going to leave everything as default I'm going to install the pfSense press ok and right here I'm going to click on select and right here I'm just going to leave everything as default and press ok and right here I'm going to press on an entire disk and I'm going to confirm yes and right here I'm going to leave everything as default and I'm just going to press ok and right here my hard drive is already selected and so I'm just going to press finish and then I'm going to press on commit at this window I'm just going to click on no and right here I'm just going to reboot and I'm going to pull out my flash drive and right here at this window make sure plug in your modem cable and also plug in your switch cable as well and now you can see that we have RE0 is up and RE1 is up so RE0 is my WAN the one that comes from modem and RE1 that's the one that goes into my switch and then press enter and right here it says enter the WAN interface or A for auto detect I know that mine is RE0 that's my WAN interface the WAN interface stands for wide area network that's the one that comes from cable modem so I'm just going to type RE0 and I'm going to press enter and then it's stating enter your LAN interface this is stands for local area network or press A since I already know that my local area is RE1 I'm just going to type RE1 and press enter and right here is asking me if I would like to proceed I'm going to press on Y and enter and now it's setting up the configurations and right here you can see WAN IP address and a LAN IP address I'm going to change LAN IP address because I have two different networks at home so what I'm going to do I'm going to press on number two and then I press enter and right here it's asking on which interface I would like to make changes and I'm going to press on two because I'm changing on LAN and right here it says enter new LAN IPv4 address I'm just going to set up 192.168.2.1 and I'm going to press enter since my numlock was off it was just typing some kind of gibberish I guess it didn't took that so I'm just going to type it again 192.168.2.1 and I'm going to press enter and right here I have to type the subnet minus 24 most likely yours is going to be 24 as well and I'm going to press enter and right here I'm just going to press enter again I'm going to press enter again and right here it's asking me if I would like to set up DHCP server on a LAN and I'm going to press yes because now my computer is going to be acting like a router and firewall so I'm going to press yes and I'm going to click on enter and now it's asking me to set up a range basically I have to set up a pool to set up a range which IP addresses is going to be leased to computers that is going to be connected to my network and I'm going to set up 192.168.2 I'm going to start with 100 and it's going to end with 200 so 
168.2.200. And right here, I'm just going to press no. And then press enter right here. Once this is complete, I'm going to get on my computer to access my new firewall router. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take one of the cables from my switch and I'm going to plug it into my computer and I'm going to use 192.168.2.1 IP address to access my new router. Right here in the web browser, we need to type that IP address and mine was 192.168.2.1 and press enter. And right here, we need to click on advanced and then scroll down and we need to click on accept risk and continue. And right here, the username is going to be admin and password is going to be default password is pfSense. And then click on sign in. And right here, I'm not going to save the password for right now. And right here, we can go through the setup, but we can always do that later. I'm just going to click on this logo and I'm going to click accept and I'm going to click close. And right here, this is your basic dashboard. This is system information. You can see uh, like your CPU usage, RAM usage, and you can see mine CPU is only one core and it's only using 5% of it. Uh, my RAM memory is four gigs and it's only using 6%. So you can actually turn a really, really old and slow computer into a very powerful router. And right here you can see interfaces. This is my WAN interface, my LAN interface. And also, if you actually going to click on this plus sign, what you can do, you can actually add more graphs into your dashboard. So, for example, traffic graph, interface statistic, firewall logs. I'm just going to add a couple just to show you guys. Service status. Uh, let's say that's, that's enough for now. So, once you scroll down, you can see traffic graph right here shows you when and then LAN interface statistic you can see packets in packets out from when and LAN then firewall logs and then service status DHCP you can see that it has a green check mark it's running and then everything else then what you can do you can actually move graphs and put it on the side put it underneath the system info And this is basically your dashboard. Then you can go into the systems. There is a bunch of different things you can do. General setup and then admin and then routing, setup wizard, update, user management, interfaces. You can go into here and then you can change your cards. If you want your LAN card to be your WAN, you can swap them out. You can set up interface group, wireless VLANs and many others. Then you can go to the firewalls. You can start setting up rules services you can click on DHCP server the one I was setting up during the install you can change it right here that I showed you range that I set up from 100 to 200 if you would like to increase or decrease you can do that here you can add another pool then you can go on status you can see DHCP leases right here you can see that one of the leases was made this is to my laptop you can see the host name, MAC address, when lease started, when lease ends. Apparently, the lease is only for two hours. And I'm sure you can increase lease to make it for 24 hours or a day or so. Or you can just leave it as default. And once you're done, I would still click on system and click on setup wizard. And then right here, just go through the initial setup really quick. Right here, hostname, pfSense, I'm just going to look at it as default, primary DNS. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up 8.8.8, .8 and then I'm going to click next. Right here, I'm going to leave everything as default. You can change your time zone, and right here, you can set up your configuration win, but I'm going to leave everything as default. I'm going to leave it as DHCP. You can set up static IP address, but it's all grayed out because I left it at the DHCP. And then we can scroll all the way and then click next. And right here as well, I'm going to leave everything as default. And then now we need to come up with a different admin password. And then click next. And then we need to click on reload to save all the changes. Okay, once it's done, once wizard is complete, what we can do, we can also click on help. And if you really like to learn PFSense in depth, what you can do, you can click on PFSense book. And right here, you can download either EPUB or PDF version. 
and this is this book is 665 pages and it's probably gonna dive in into this entire os and every software that i use in this video tutorial i'm gonna put links in the description below and if you like this video press that like button and don't forget to subscribe thanks for watching